Hey guys, welcome back. It's Anthony Tejada, your local Orlando realtor, and today we're going to take a community tour of St. Cloud. Stick with me. It's going to be a great one. All right, guys, like I said, my name is Anthony Tejada with Prefer Real Estate Brokers here in Orlando, Florida, your trusted realtor. And today we're going to talk about the community of St. Cloud right here in Central Florida, very near Orlando and Kissimmee. And it is a beautiful place to live and it's going to be a great tour. And I'm going to show you plenty of things and history about this town. Now, before we start, can you please hit the subscribe and alert buttons down below because it helps my channel a lot and I love bringing you these videos every week and you'll be alerted if you subscribe and hit the bell below. I love doing these videos and I love helping people. I get calls literally every week of people moving in and out of Central Florida and I really, really love it. So sit back, relax, enjoy this video and history about St. Cloud. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream. And that you could, for example, have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time. Or any length of time you wanted to have. And you would naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure you could conceive. And after several nights of 75 years of total pleasure each, you would say, well, that's pretty great. But now let's, um, let's have a surprise. Let's have a dream which isn't under control. Well, something is going to happen to me that I don't know what it's going to be. And uh, you, you would dig that and come out of that and say, wow, that was a, a close shave, wasn't it? Hey guys, so let's talk about St. Cloud. St. Cloud is one of two incorporated cities in Osceola County, the other being Kissimmee. St. Cloud was founded on East Lake Tohopakalaga in 1909 and was an early home to the largest concentration of Union Army veterans in the South hence its nickname Soldier City. Its Mount Peace Cemetery, established in 1910, is one of the largest cemeteries located south of the Mason-Dixon line with more than 400 Union soldiers buried there. Incorporated in 1911, the city prospered by luring veterans with inexpensive city lots and nearby farmland. The first thousand lots sold for $50 each and the price later increased to 100 per lot. Wish that was the case now, huh? In St. Cloud, many of the streets are named after states in the Union. According to some St. Cloud historians, allegedly a street was given the name of the state from which its first settlers came from. Reportedly, the largest sugar mill in the nation operated in the late 1800s in what is now St. Cloud. A little more context on that in a minute. Some people believe that there are French roots to the city's name, named after St. Cloud in France a small but very wealthy commune in the western suburbs of Paris. While others say it may have come from the great white clouds that rose above the mills during the refining process, or that it was just simply named after St. Cloud, Minnesota. Which version of the naming of St. Cloud you believe is up to you, but some of the charm is in the roots of the name as you can see. The story of St. Cloud's inception. During the 1870s, Hamilton Diston of Philadelphia took an interest in developing the region while on fishing trips with Henry Shelton Stanford. If you don't know who that is, that is the founder of the city of Stanford a couple miles away, right here in Central Florida. 
This then contracted with the Florida Internal Improvement Fund, then in receivership, to pay $1 million to offset its Civil War and Reconstruction debt. In exchange, Distin was awarded half the land he drained from the area swamps. He dug canals and in 1886 to 1887 established St. Cloud Sugarcane Plantation, later known as Distin Sugar Mill. Distin opened the Sugar Belt Railway to the South Florida Railroad in 1888 to carry his product to market. But the panic of 1893 dropped land values and the great freeze of 94 and 95 hurt the mill. Distin returned to Philadelphia where he died later in 1896. The Sugar Belt Railway merged into South Florida Railroad and an attempt to cultivate rice in the area which also failed. And for several years the land remained empty. Then in 1909 the Seminole Land and Investment Company acquired 35,000 acres as the, the site for the Grand Army of Republic Veterans Colony. St. Cloud was selected because of its health climate and productiveness of soil. It was first permanently settled in 1909 by William G. King, a real estate manager from Alachua County who had been given the responsibility to plan, locate, and develop a town. On September 16, 1909, the Kissimmee Valley Gazette announced the new town of St. Cloud, a soldier's colony near Kissimmee. The newspaper called the Seminole Land and Investment Company's purchase one of the most important real estate deals ever made in the state of Florida. It was reported that the company has searched all over Florida for the perfect site for veterans to colony. On June 1, 1915, the Florida legislator incorporated St. Cloud as a city. Its downtown features landmark buildings by the Orlando architectural firm Ryan and Roberts and others downtown are predominantly a Spanish revival style architecture. St. Cloud has tried to separate itself from neighboring cities and particularly the theme parks by promoting an image of small town life and by attempting to make itself economically less dependent on Kissimmee. Let's get into the geography a bit. St. Cloud is located at these coordinates right here. Just pump the coordinates in Google and you will see a map of the area. According to the United Census Bureau, the city has a total area of 9.2 square miles, of which 0.11% is water. St. Cloud is on the southern shore of East Lake Toho Pekeliga, or Lake Toho for short. Yeah, let's keep that one short. It's an exceptionally clear lake with good visibility to the depths of 7 to 9 feet. East Lake is nearly circular in shape and covers approximately 12,000 acres. It is a perfect example of what is often called a dishpan lake. It produces many trophy bass annually. A familiar sight along the shores of East Lake Toho is the rare protected Florida Sandhill Crane. The nearest major highway is US Route 192 running in tandem with US Route 441 East and West. The six lane road is intersected by avenues running north and south. Many have names of US states in no particular order as we covered why earlier. Here's some interesting facts about St. Cloud. Some films were shot in St. Cloud, like 2000 Maniacs in 1964, Barracuda in 1978, and also everybody's favorite Florida movie, Waterboy in 1998, starring Adam Sandler. Who knew? If you did, let me know in the comments down below how you found out about these movies and how they were shot here you know, besides looking at the ending credits for the movies named. Okay, let's talk about some of the local places here in St. Cloud, like Lakefront Park. It's definitely the best view in all of St. Cloud due to its position directly on Lake Toho. The surface of the lake seems endless and vast space allows for water activities and boating without having to be at the ocean. Gathering at this park's facilities, boaters and nearby residents with accessible open space to enjoy the outdoors. Many groups gather here to dine on the lakefront restaurant as well as go for brisk walks or just to soak in some clean air. It's a nice scenic part of town with parallel parking available. There's plenty of docking and rentals available as well. If you're in St. Cloud, it pays to come here to take in the relaxing view of the water and it's one of my favorite and most scenic parts of visiting this area. It's close to major shops and dining as well, so take a swirl by lakefront and enjoy the great outdoors. 
If you talk to the locals, one of the most stapled restaurants in the area is the Catfish Place. In 1973, the owners left a career in life insurance to try their hand at the restaurant business. A 20-seat and 10-stool restaurant serving such items as chicken sandwiches was off to a slow start. Then they decided a special menu was needed, something that you couldn't get at a fast food restaurant. It was decided to feature native Florida foods, and Catfish Place became a reality. Serving customers the freshest catfish available, caught daily in Lake Okeechobee. They prepare it fresh on the premises every day, never frozen. As catfish became a popular menu favorite, they added other Florida specialties like soft shell turtle from local lakes and wild gator from the central Florida marshes. To complement these Florida specialties, they developed their own coleslaw, hush puppies, homemade hash browns, sauces, and breading mixes. It's something you have to check out. Another new local scene for families is Canary Park. The newest park in St. Cloud with one particular amazing feature of being the first all-inclusive park. It's great for all children, especially designed and to accommodate handicapped children, which is very close to my heart. With many new park items and a ramp all throughout that gives handicapped children the opportunity to have fun at the park like all other children. I found this park exciting for everyone with lots of slides, learning opponents, swings, climbing features, and all types of rubber pad all over the park that makes it feel safe. There were also landing pads in front of every slide. For parents, there were plenty of benches as well as two covered pavilions, great for birthday parties and overall awesome fun. I'm so happy and I can suggest this park to any family in the area and just even families that can drive from nearby. It's a great, great park. The links for these parks in the local area, I will add to the comment section below. Now for a little bit of St. Cloud housing market information. With 54,115 people, 14,636 houses or apartments, and a medium cost of homes at 260, 431, St. Cloud real estate prices are well above average cost compared to the national prices. Single family detached homes are single most common housing type in St. Cloud, accounting for 72.64% of the city's housing units. Other types of housing that are prevalent in St. Cloud include row houses and other attached homes, which is 7.68%, mobile home or trailers cover 7.57%, and a few duplex homes are converted to small apartments and other small apartment buildings at about 6%. Owner occupied three and four bedroom dwellings, primarily in single family detached homes, are the most prevalent type of housing you will see in St. Cloud. Owner occupied housing accounts for 72.02% of St. Cloud's homes and 69% have either three or four bedrooms, which is average size relative to America. St. Cloud homes and real estate are some of the newest in America, coming in at 45.83% of St. Cloud's housing which was built in 2000, making the city have a very new look and feel. If you like the amenities of newer homes and subdivisions, then you will probably like what St. Cloud real estate market has to offer. Quite a bit of the housing here was also built between 1970 and 1999, which accounts for 40%, and between 1940 and 1969, which accounts for 9%. There are also some housing in St. Cloud built before 1939, which accounts for about 4%. In the last 10 years, St. Cloud has experienced some of the highest home appreciation rates of any community in the nation. St. Cloud real estate appreciated 81.36% over the last 10 years, which is av average annual home appreciation rate of 6.13%, putting St. Cloud in the top 10 percentile nationally for real estate appreciation. If you are a home buyer or real estate investor, St. Cloud definitely has a track record of being one of the best long-term real estate investments in America through the last 10 years. In the description, I will also post some of the highest appreciating St. Cloud neighborhoods since 2000. Also the zips, so you can do some researching of your own, of course. If you need any help at all real estate wise or have any questions, please feel free to text or call me at 407-790-0929. As always, this is Anthony Tejada with Prefer Real Estate Brokers, your Orlando realtor, always shattering your expectations. Give me that outro.